Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Let's Max Warframe. So it turns out I was a little bit off in my estimate of when the Syndicate Melees were going to come out. They're here already. We're going to take a look at my pick of the bunch and that is the Tellus Boltus. Now the Tellus Boltus is the latest offering from the Arbiters of Hexus. Can be picked up from their Syndicate store after rising to max rank and spending a whopping 125,000 standing. You also need to be Mastery Rank 8 to be able to get hold of them, but what do you actually get for that huge standing cost? Well it comes with a pretty decent base damage of 85, with the majority coming in the form of Puncture, 72.3, 8.5 as Impact and 4.2 as Slash. Makes it the highest base damage of all the time for weapons since, well that's not particularly hard since there's like 3 of them. The supplemental stats, they're not horrendous though, 10% crit chance, 200% multiplier, and a pretty decent 25% status chance means you're going to prop quite a few status effects on enemies around you. Its attack speed also gets a bit of a bump up from 0.9 to 1.1, so Prime Fury is going to be pretty nice with it. It's also going to be decently fast. Like the rest of the Tomfa weapons though, it comes with a massive slide attack damage of 510 at base, so slide attacks with this thing is going to hit ridiculously hard. But that's when the Telos Boltus shines. And that's when you combine that slide attack damage with this weapon's passive. Which is that on a slide attack, a radial wave of damage is sent out from the player, hitting all enemies around. The wave itself can be modded, it can crit, so maiming strike works. It can take the damage increase from channeling, so killing blow works. Currently seems to be bugged right now since that doesn't actually have any energy cost whatsoever on the wave. So there's no reason not to channel pretty much if you're just going to go for a wave build. Um, the wave can proc status, so elemental and status mods work, and primed reach also works on it to increase the size of the wave, and the size of the wave is huge. It's like a whip with prime reach on it, it is incredible. It's a very flexible thing with the exception that it is line of sight, so enemies can block each other from damage, and that is something to take note of if you're going to use it for a slide attack build. Um, it's also worth noting the wave does not increase the combo counter, however it will be affected by it. And the passive ability, however, does replace the normal justice effect that the other Telos weapons have. But like all Mel melees, um, it does have downsides. It's not really good for blood rush and body count, which means it's not really crit viable from that perspective. Um, it also only has a very small attack range normally, which is a pain for landing those slide attacks. But it also has a really small slam as well, even when prime reach is installed, something like 2 or 3 meters. Normally, I would talk about the stance that I prefer, but there's only one, Gemini Cross, so let's get right into the builds. First one I've got here is focused on the wave and getting the most damage out of the wave. We've got Prime Pressure Point, Prime Fury, Prime Reach, Maiming Strike to bring out the crit chance on those slide attacks, um, actually brings it up to 100% so you're always going to crit. Organ Chasser for crit damage, two 90% elementals of your choice, and Spawn Strike to further increase the damage that the weapon puts out, and thus increasing the wave damage. I tried this build a few different ways, other elemental in there instead of Spawn Strike, Killing Blow instead of Spawn Strike, that's why there's more former on here than there needs to be. Um, however, for pushing the most amount of damage out of the wave, this was the strongest. The weapon itself is also damn strong as well. It's not like we're modding for the wave and then ruin the rest of the weapon. It's a very, very strong build. Um, or you could build for like an AoE status prop from your weapon. This time, for uh, you know, same first three mods, then three dual stats. We have Viral and Heat, Body Count to keep the combo counter up, and then Maiming Strike once again for the crits. This build is more melee focused, using the weapon to build up the combo counter to retain it with Body Count. And then Slide Attacking to put out that AoE Viral proc or Heat procs to stun them. It's a really effective build. And with 70% status chance, there's a high chance you're going to proc at least one item or one proc on each enemy when you do those slide attacks. Does sacrifice a little way in the pure damage though, but body count keeping that combo count higher for the extra damage, that really, really helps. And then we have your pure damage build. Same mods at the start, but we have three elementals, 90%, and body count once again. It's basically your cookie cutter elemental melee build really while still taking advantage of the maiming strike on the slide attacks for the huge damage. It's my least preferred of the three builds here, however I put it up just because it's always good to have options. So what do I think of the Tellus Boltus? Well honestly I really like them, in fact I'd say they are definitely top tier weapons. 
That AoE that is affected by weapon mods is so incredibly strong, as is the weapon in general. If it wasn't for the worst line of sight detection in the game, they would be my go-to weapons for focus farming. Right now, the only bad thing I can really think about them to say is that line of sight. Enemies block other enemies from the wave, fair enough. But objects like explosive barrels, grenier anti-energy doors, the corpus cryo barrels, even windows, stuff like that that are still hit, even though the wave has already been stopped from hitting an enemy by another enemy, the wave carries on through and still hits the objects the other side. And then you have knee-high walls and railings and stuff. Sometimes it stops it, sometimes it doesn't. It's all over the place and kind of a mess. I understand the need for it to not go through walls and whatever, and maybe reduce damage to enemies if the wave passes through another enemy in the way, but not block completely, much like Exalted Wave. This kind of hurts the weapon a lot against factions where you have a lot of enemies at once, most specifically the Infested, who block the wave more often than not. It's a shame, because the weapon is still fantastic, and probably one that I'm going to use a lot. It's got a lot of damage, good utility with sending out radio status procs, and looks incredible. It's just a shame that it doesn't penetrate nullifier bubbles. These could have been my anti-nullifier melees. But I just wish the wave was at the very least consistent, and not kind of selective of what gets hit and what doesn't, that's all. Even then, with this problem, it's not enough for me to dislike the weapon, and I still think it's a fantastic one. I am really happy that although we lost the radial proc when the Syndicate melees came out, we have a weapon with actually interesting and good mechanics attached to it that's give us some variation in builds, challenging those standard builds that we've always gone with on our weapons. Those of you that have been here for a while know I've spoken about being bored of cut and paste melee weapons, and these things are a breath, they're a breath of fresh air quite frankly. I am looking forward to taking a look at the rest of the melee weapons, which is not something I've said for a while, and I will be doing one each day. But as always guys, many thanks for watching, and I shall see you in the next video.